And what's fascinating that I found from this interview, they talk an awful lot about John Nash and how some of his works actually closely relate to Bitcoin. John Nash, as a reminder, he's, he was a famous American mathematician at Princeton University. He was the inventor of the game theory from A Beautiful Mind, you know, that famous movie portrayed by Russell Crowe, where he depicted uh, Nash's illness, his schizophrenia illness, and the roads to recovery from that. Now, there are strong links between Nash's identity with Satoshi Nakamoto during this interview, but I'm not really concerned about that because I think what investors are most interested in are understanding a little bit more detail some of the key innovations from Nash and how it matches Bitcoin ideals. I think that's more important and more interesting for Bitcoin or would-be investors in the future. Now, the two key innovations I like to draw on in this episode is things like what is asymptotically ideal money and also what is unspent transaction output, the UTXO, because these two innovations from Nash and matching with Bitcoin ideals, how they address things like inflation, and the untrustworthiness elements we have over centralized authorities and entities. We are you know, immersed in currency debasement. We are immersed in irresponsible money printing from governments and central banks. Uh, we have a lot of multiple currencies, you know, which has been really the driver for these problems, right? and really why Bitcoin is becoming that solution, that light at the end of the tunnel solution to these problems, to these day-to-day -day problems that we all face, no matter where we are in the world, that Bitcoin is certainly becoming that magical hard asset solution to address these very fundamental problems that we all face. This is why I felt this is very, very important and interesting to give that insightful knowledge of these two key innovations around the asymptotically ideal money, which uh, talks about the system of currency or money that is perfectly stable in value. And this is supported and backed by the capped uh, nature of Bitcoin, right? It has, you will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in circulation. And this is key requirement which supports this ideal money notion from John Nash. And also the UTXO, the unspent transaction output in the Bitcoin network, which aims to solve the double spend money issue, where every transaction, every block that is kept in each one of the nodes in the Bitcoin network will always be given the, the identical copies of the Bitcoin public ledger at every moment in time, particularly where new blocks and new transactions are incorporated into the Bitcoin block in its public ledger. Every identical copies of that will be shared across every single node. Uh, and that is what the UTXO aims to address in the network and why it's so important, the notion of proof of work, because this is what UTXO aims to achieve. So I, I hope that you really enjoyed today's episode because it's, given, it's really opened up my eyes at least as to why I think, and I still continue to think, and it's been augmented by this interview and, and rather interesting discussions about these two key innovations as to why Bitcoin is certainly that global monetary network, trust network, that would circumvent these issues of inflation, irresponsible money print from governments, so on. It's completely immune. That's why we are seeing a lot of individuals, a lot of corporations, a lot of institutions, and now nation states adopting Bitcoin in its strategic reserve. And this is the trend that we are seeing. So the message is very clear. Right? This is why you should certainly add part of your wealth into Bitcoin and importantly hold it into the very long term. For me, it's always been a minimum of 10 year period because I'm fairly confident that given that we are learning an awful lot more about Bitcoin and its properties such as these, and the trend is, is gonna be continuing to go on an upward trend, as more and more people wake up to the fact that, you know, they need to do something and, and park some of its wealth into Bitcoin into the long term. So that's the you know, trajectory I'm following. And I can say wholeheartedly, I'm, I'm, I've made some tremendous gains, but I'm not gonna fall into the trap of relinquishing my holdings in Bitcoin to satisfy the needs that I have today. No, I'm holding it into the very long term, particularly to create that intergenerational wealth ambition and goal that I have and as well for my own retirement needs. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to hit the like button and to share the video to your family and friends. 
and colleagues at work. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to this channel as I regularly post some interesting videos such as these, anything to do with Bitcoin, blockchain technology and the future of finance. So until next time.